Hi everyone, today's lesson is a right triangle chapter test review number two. Um, at the request of some of my students, they've asked for another review. So I'm going to review the packet uh, application problems as well as um, the sample practice test that is in the homework packet as well. So let's get started. Um, the first question says, a plane took off from the runway. The plane had flown 2,000 meters. It covered a horizontal distance of 1,800 meters. Find the measure of the angle of elevation to the nearest tenth of a degree. So the first thing you're going to draw, and I always would recommend that you draw a um, diagram for every one of these problems, okay? So then uh, the plane's taking off. You know, here's a plane going up like that. There's my plane. and um, the plane has flown 2,000 meters, so we're flying like this. Plane's going up this way. Um, it covered a horizontal distance of 1,800 uh, meters. Find the measure of the angle. Um, so what we're looking at is this angle in here, that's theta. We are looking for that angle of elevation. So you, based on where you are here, and you've got the adjacent side, and you've got your hypotenuse, we're gonna use um, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is cosine. So cosine of the angle that we're looking for, that's theta, um, is equal to 1800, which is adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is over 2000. Um, we're trying to solve for theta, so you're gonna have theta is equal to what we call arc cosine of, and you can reduce that to 1820. This is not, it's not required to reduce this because you are gonna put this into your calculator. You can even reduce that further. Um, when you type this in your calculator, a couple things to make sure of, and one of them is that you are in degree mode. So you need to be in the degree mode to make sure that you get the accurate answer. So theta, once you type this in, is approximately 25.8 degrees. And so that's the angle of elevation. So the second question talks about a cliff is 800 meters above sea level. So we'll say there's my cliff. Um, it says the angle of depression um, to a boat is 35 degrees. So basically what's happened is, is here's the cliff. Here's the top of the cliff, okay, right up here. And you've got an angle of depression is always based on a horizontal. So this angle down here, that's the actual angle of um, depression. So that angle, okay, is going to be uh, here, which is theta, and it says that that's 35 degrees, the angle of depression. To the nearest meter, how far is the boat from the base of the cliff? So you're looking for, um, here's your boat, okay, there's our little sailboat. Um, we know that if that's 35 degrees, we also know that's 35 degrees as well, because these two lines here are parallel that makes a transversal and then an alternate interior angle. Um, you also know that the um, cliff is 80 meters above sea level. Um, to the nearest meter, so we're still in meters, how far is the boat from the cliff? So we're that's what we're looking for. And so we're, we aren't looking for the hypotenuse and um, so therefore we're looking for this adjacent side. So if you're here, this is the opposite side here and this is the adjacent side, so that's what we're looking for. So you're gonna use tangent. So tangent of 35 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. And what I'm going to do is cross multiply. I'm gonna get x times a tangent of 35 degrees, oops, tangent of 35 degrees uh, is equal to 80 times one. So we have x is equal to 80 divided by tangent of 35 degrees. And that value is basically 80 divided by 0 0.7002. So X is approximately um, 114.25, okay? Um, number three says from the top of a tower that's 60 feet tall, so our top, our tower, 60 feet tall. Um, the angle of depression, again, angle of depression is based on a horizontal. So based on our horizontal, the angle of depression is this value here. 
is 25 degrees to an object on the ground, okay? So therefore, this is 25 degrees here, um, which makes this also 25 degrees. Um, it says find the distance from the object to the base of the tower. So again, we're looking for this value. So we're gonna use tangent as well. So we're gonna go tangent of 25 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. I'm gonna cross multiply, I get X times tangent of 25 degrees is equal to 60. Now, if you are um, working this out first, instead of just dividing, um, keep in mind that when you do divide and you are using um, like a decimal approximation, like some people are just gonna type in tangent of 25 to their calculator, that's gonna give them a more accurate um, answer. But then other people will, do this instead they'll go 60 divided by 0.4663 just make sure that you round off to at least four decimal places tens hundreds thousands ten thousands because that the more you round off the more accurate your answer will be so now we have x is about uh 128.67 um and this is to the nearest foot so this is feet okay Um, number four says the ladder leans up against the building, uh, making an angle of 49 degrees with the ground. So here's the ladder with the little slat. We'll put some slats on that. Okay, and it's leaning up against the house. Um, uh, reaches a point on the building 12 meters above ground. So there's 12. Here's your 49 degrees and <clears throat> find the length of the ladder. So that's that value here. So you have the angle. Um, you have the opposite side from the angle and you have the hypotenuse. So what uses the opposite side in the hypotenuse? Remember your SOKATOA, SOKATOA, sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent. So we have the opposite side and we have the hypotenuse we're trying to find, so we're gonna use sine. So sine of the angle, which is 49 degrees, the angle always goes after your word, either sine, cosine, or tangent, um, is equal to 12 over x. So I'm gonna cross multiply, I'm gonna go, this is over one, so I'm gonna say x times sine of 49 degrees is equal to 12, so x is equal to 12 divided by whatever sine of 49 degrees is. Now, again, I just wanna reiterate, please be careful that when you're doing this and you're approximating sine of 49 degrees that you do at least go to the um, 10 thousandths position. So this is gonna be x is, is equal to um, 12 divided by sine of 49, which is a seven, 0.7547, and so X is gonna be about 15.9 feet, meters, so we're in meters. Um, just a couple of things. Um, if you're at a part um, on your test where let's say you are not allowed a calculator and it's just, it says like put in calculator ready position, this would be your, your answer here because that's as far as you can get without a calculator. With a calculator, you can, you know, of course go further with that. Um, so this one talks about the road grade. Um, if a car drives two miles on the road, how much altitude has the car gained, but they wanna know in feet. So what we do know is moving this up. So this is, that's kind of a steep highway. Would you think? <laughs> I, pro I probably don't need to make it that steep. But um, so what we know is that we know percent over hundred. So actually what we do know is that with the 12% um, grade so far, you do know that this is 12 over uh, 100 and it says how much altitude has it gained? So basically they wanna know, you know, this whole distance, how far has it gained, how much altitude, that's your A for altitude, but this we can find because we know that um, two miles and we know a mile is 5,280 feet. So that basically means that two of those is gonna give us what, uh, 10,560 feet? So we know that. So we're going to be using that at some point. But what I don't have 
is this angle. And that's what I need in order to find A, my altitude, okay? So just right now, we're gonna use this little triangle here in order to find the angle. So opposite and adjacent, so on the side, I'm gonna go tangent of theta is equal to 12 over 100. Um, theta is equal to arc tangent of 12 divided by 100. And in working this out, theta is about, I believe you get the angle to be about 6.84 degrees. You do need a calculator for this problem. So what I'm really looking for is this big triangle, right? Where this is 10,560 um, feet. This angle is 6.84. And I wanna know, the key word is, how much altitude has the car gained? This is your altitude, A, okay? Um, so this is opposite from the angle. Always go from the angle. So that's opposite and hypotenuse. So you're gonna say sine of 6.84 is equal to A over 10,560. And all I have to do is now multiply A is equal to 10,560 times sine of 6.84 degrees. And working that out, I end up getting a approximately 1 to 1257.67. Um, feet. So it's gained about 1200 feet. Okay. All right, cool. Um, so this is the old test from the uh, packet. So that's what we're the homework packet. So that what we're going to start doing is this. Um, which of the following side lengths would, would form an obtuse triangle? So for me, I think what I would do is, if I were doing this, and I would go through and make sure that all three of these are triangles. That's, that's like the first step that I always do. Um, make sure that two sides are greater than the third side. So that works. Four plus five, nine greater than seven, uh, nine greater than six. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 is not greater than 9. So this one actually is not even a triangle. Okay, so that one's not in the running for whether it's an obtuse triangle, because that's the question. Is it obtuse? So now I would then, my next step would be to look at this, my biggest sides, my biggest sides. And then I'm going to say, well, 10 squared is what to 6 squared plus 8 squared? Well, 36 plus 64 is 100. This one is a right triangle. Okay, now I'm gonna go seven squared is what to four squared plus five squared. So that's 16 plus 25. And so what is that? 41, two, three, 41. And then this is 49. So 49 is greater than 41. So this one is obtuse. So B is obtuse. And then just checking to make sure, we've got six squared is what to four squared plus five squared. Um, that's 16 plus 25, and that's 36. So again, 36 is less than 41, so this one actually is acute. So the only one that was obtuse was B. Um, this one says, sorry, this one says find the geometric mean between 2 and 18. So you're going to go 2 is to x as x is to 18. x squared equals 2 times 18, which is 36. I'm going to square root both sides. I get x equals 6. So my answer is A. Um, complete the similarity statement. Oh boy. Um, it's asking me what triangle A, M, H is similar to and amh is similar to triangle atm this one and mth mth and it does matter which way you say it so be very careful and go back through that in a right triangle pqr with right angle at r so i'm actually going to draw this okay here's r and it said right angle is at r P, Q, R. It said, if sine of P, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and oh, this is a 512.13. I hope you notice that that's a 512.13. 
from our triplets. Um, what is tangent of Q? So what's tangent of Q? Well, Q's here. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So you would say tangent of Q is equal to 12 over 5. And that answer um, for this problem is D. So the next question says, a diagonal of a square is 8 centimeters. So here's our square. And it says the diagonal, that length here, is 8. And we know that's x, x, x root 2. What's the perimeter? Well, half of that is 4. So that's 4 root 2, OK? And so perimeter would be adding up all the sides. So 4 root 2 plus 4 root 2 plus 4 root 2 plus 4 root 2, or 4 times 4 is 16 root 2. There you go. A radical expression does not simplify to that. Oh, boy. Um, let's see. So this one is going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 10 over 2. So square root of 4 is 2. 2s are going to cancel, and I get the square root of 10. So that one doesn't cancel to that. That's A. Um, let's see. Multiply by 1 to get rid of the root on the denominator. So I have 10 root 5 over 5. 5 divides into 10 twice. I get 2 root 5. Okay, that one works. Um, oh, this is just the square root of 20. It's the square root of 20 because you can divide roots. Um, and so this is square root of 4 times the square root of 5, which is 2 root 5 again. Okay, so that one works. Um, square root of 4 is 2. 2 divides into 4 twice, so I get 2 root 5 again. So I guess A is the only one that doesn't work. Um, given that ABC is a triangle, uh, looks like a right triangle, which equation would be used to solve for AB? So they want this length here. So to me, it would look like I'm going to go either. For this one, it looks like I would say tangent of 67 is equal to 11 over X. Um, that would work. And I also know that this is 23 degrees here. So to find x, I could also have used cosine, because cosine of this angle here of 23 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, so this would not be it, because that's x. They got that wrong. Um, sine, you can't use sine for that, because you, well, hold on a second. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is completely wrong. Let me fix this. This one would, if I was from here, would be sine of 67 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so opposite over hypotenuse, so that's x. Well, that one's not right. So sine of 67, oh, this was the right one right here. And you can't use tangent because tangent only uses opposite and adjacent. If I'm looking for the hypotenuse, you can't use that value. So I'm so sorry for that. Um, the next problem says, show your calculator set up for full credit. Um, round all answers to the 10th tenth place. Um, so solving for x, so you're here, so you're gonna use sine. So you'd say sine of 47 degrees is equal to 5 over x. Um, solve for x. And so calculator ready, calculator setup, that's calculator ready, is when you have x by itself. So we're going to cross multiply. So here you are. Again, sine. Sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So that's sine. Cross multiply, you get x times sine of 47 is equal to 5. You get x is equal to 5 divided by sine of 47. So that's calculator ready. That's set up. So for this problem right here, um, for this next one, we would, let's see here, sine of 47 is approximately that times x. So this is going to be about 6.84. And that's the length of, it, of x. Um, keep in mind that to be realistic, this value here, see one length is 5. The hypotenuse always has to be greater than that length. So remember that the hypotenuse is always your biggest side, uh, longest side. 
Um, for this value here to try to find the angle, um, we don't have the opposite side, so then we're not going to use anything that has opposite. So what we do have is if you put yourself at this angle here, okay, you have the adjacent side here and you have the hypotenuse. So you're going to say cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Now, to find theta or to find the angle, we got to move the cosine to the other side. So, co so we're going to say um, x is equal to arc cosine of 15 over 20. And you can reduce that. Um, this is calculator ready right here. This is calculator ready. Then in order to do this, you're going to need a calculator. And when you take arc cosine of 15 over 20, you get approximately, um, I got 41.4 degrees. Okay. Lombard Street um, is a hill in San Francisco. It has a 27% grade. So we're going to put this value up. Remember percent. Percent is um, percent is uh, one over hundred. So this is twenty-seven times one over one hundred, which is twenty-seven over a hundred, which is our rise over our run. So for this problem right here, we're trying to find this angle of elevation. We have the rise is twenty-seven. We have the run is a hundred. So we have the opposite side here from the angle, and we have the adjacent side from the angle. So you're going to say tangent of theta is equal to 27 over 100. So theta is equal to arc tangent of 27 over 100. And remember, the only time you take arc tangent, arc cosine, or arc sine is if you're trying to find the angle measurement, okay? So for this one, I end up getting theta or um, the angle is equal to about 15.1 degrees, okay? Um, let's see, an observer looks up at an angle of elevation to the top of a building. So here we go, we're looking up 38 degrees. It says the observer is 20 feet from the base of the building, okay? It says the observer is 60 inches tall, which is five feet. So that's five feet. So they're, what they're saying is, is the observer, this is the observer, okay? And they're, they're that tall and they're looking and they're five feet tall. So like what they're gonna ask for is um, how tall in feet is the building. So we want this value and we're gonna use, we're gonna try to find that value but once we find X right here, we're going to have to add five feet to that because that's how tall, um, or is it four inches or five inches? What is that? Um, what does it say? The observer is 60 inches tall and her eyes are four inches from the top of her head. So if she's five feet tall or 60 inches, that's going to be um, minus four inches. So five feet feet minus four inches. So that's 56 inches. So we'll have to go through that and figure that one out in just a minute. So what we have here is we're going to find X first. So we're going to go tangent of 38 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. So we're going to cross multiply and I get X is equal to 20 times tangent of 38 degrees. So for the value of X, I get that to be approximately 15.63 feet, okay? And so what we do now is we'd have to change um, our feet. So we know that, let's see here, what are we going to do this? We're going to say, well, 60, let's see, 60 inches divided by 12, right, is 5 feet. Um, we know that what we end up getting is four, let's see, four feet, eight inches is about 4.67 feet. So let's see here, we're gonna go um, 15.63 plus 4.67 feet makes um, 19, no, 20, makes 20. It's a little bit more than 19. So it's gonna make 20 
0.3 feet. Ooh, that was tricky. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Oh, and that's all I have for you. So a um, little bit of a review, not too much. Um, I hope that helps, and good luck on your test. Thanks for watching.